And this one should be okay, I think, generally. Check, check. <laughs> There's chocolate up here. <laughs> He 
walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, he lives, salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives, he lives within my heart. Our sin and our 
will pardon and cleanse within grace, grace, God's grace, grace that is greater than all our sin. Oh, we got a few minutes to 11, so why don't we turn and wish a few people Happy Easter here this morning. Now that you're comfortably settled, we'll get up and uh, say Happy Easter to a few people around you. And
Well, good morning and happy Easter officially, if I didn't catch you already or see you yet this morning. And good to be together as uh, we come to worship uh, today to, to celebrate our hope and light and, and the joy of, of life in Jesus because he is alive. And so it is from the shadow of the cross and the empty tomb that we boldly proclaim Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. I think you guys can do better than that, but uh, we'll, we'll keep working on it throughout the day. We've warmed up voices singing already. But we, we remember today especially that death is swallowed up in victory. We hear from St. Paul's uh, letter to the Corinthians, O oh, death, where is your victory? O oh, death, where is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Why don't we stand together and sing of that, that good news, that hope we have in Jesus. Always a good way to start Easter, singing praise and hallelujah. But uh, we turn to hear the, the story that brings us together, the story that unites us, the story that gives us joy, that fills us with hope today. Uh, we hear from Mark's gospel, the story of Jesus' resurrection, of Jesus uh, coming to life again. When the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Siloam, brought spices so that they might go and anoint Jesus. And very early on that first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. And they were saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? And looking up, they saw that the stone had been rolled back it was very large. And entering the tomb, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, dressed in a white robe, and they were alarmed. And he said to them, do not be alarmed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, 
who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where he laid, where they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going before you to Galilee. And there you will see him just as he told you. And they went out and fled from the tomb, for trembling and astonishment had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. This is the good news. This is our story today as God's people. Well, we keep singing of the good news today. Jesus, comfort for all who mourn. You are the source of heaven's hope on earth. Jesus, light in the darkness. Jesus, truth in each circumstance. You are the source of heaven's light on earth. You lived and died, you broke the chains, you rose to life. You are the hope living in us, you are the rock in whom we trust. You are the light shining for all the world to see. You rose from the dead, conquering fear. Our Prince of Peace, drawing us near, Jesus our hope, living for all who will receive. You are the hope, living in us, you are the rock, in whom we trust, you are the light, shining for all the world to see. From the dead, conquering fear, our Prince of Peace, drawing us near, Jesus our hope, living for all who will receive. Lord, we believe, Lord, we believe, Lord, we Oh, we pray together. God of glory, by the raising of your Son, you have broken the chains of death and hell. Fill your church with faith and hope, for a new day has dawned, and the way to life stands open in our Savior Jesus Christ, to whom belongs all glory, honor, and praise. Amen. Oh, you could be seated. Uh, not too much in the way of announcements. Uh, it's been a busy past week and a quieter week uh, coming up here uh, around Trinity. Uh, anything need to be said about tea and bake sale? That's coming up April 20th, so uh, yeah, mark your calendars for that. And uh, like I said, other than that, it's a fairly, fairly quiet week after the busyness of Holy Week, but it's good to Good to, to be together, to, to be here, like I've said a few times already today, but, but really is. It's good to be, be together and celebrate our, our hope. Andreas is probably not just waving at me, is he? No, okay. You, so Andreas is looking for volunteers to help with the food bank. So if you're interested in helping with that, you can talk to him whenever. <laughs> so please keep that in mind as a service to, to our community. All right. Well, without further ado, kids, you get to hear me talk. You guys can come on. <laughs> Everyone gets to hear me talk all day, it seems, but come on up. You guys can. all decked out in your Easter finest. Hello, everyone. You've had a good Easter so far? Yeah. Have you hunted eggs and all that good stuff still? Some, some of you still do that? Yeah. Yeah. And you were successful in finding, finding everything you were looking for? 
No? Yeah, it's <laughs> Excellent. Well, keep looking. Give you something to keep looking for. So you guys know the Easter story already pretty well, I think. You know, it's like uh, you guys pretty well all know, know the story here. But one of the things, have you ever noticed in the, the Easter story, so they go to the tomb, and you, you ever notice that the people that are going to the tomb, they almost always ask the question, who's going to roll the stone away? Yeah. Like, how are we going to get in? Yeah, because it was sealed off. It was sealed off. You're right. You're right. So it, put yourself in their shoes. If you were going to the tomb, if you knew your friend Jesus was, had died, they put him in this big tomb, this big rock thing. We have pictures of it later. Uh, it, what would you do? How would you move the stone? <laughs> Any thoughts? Have you ever thought about that? No. What's that? What did you say? Nothing. Nothing. You did say something. I don't know what. Any thoughts? Have you ever thought about? Um, what, would you, what would you do? Hit it with a pickaxe. Actually, Judah, do you want to sneak in just behind you there? I've got a few options. You want to pull those out on the floor there? Show me what we've got. What do we have there? What is that? A chisel. I didn't bring the sledge. I figured that was not a good idea. Yeah. Hammer drill. I don't have a jackhammer. I'm not, I should have asked for some of you. I know you probably do, right? Would you bring any of that kind of stuff, tools and equipment maybe to Everly looks shocked. <laughs> <laughs> no, you would just use your superhuman strength, Riker. Just push it right out of the way, hey? Excellent. <laughs> they were wondering, though, because they said, like in our reading today, it said the stone was there, and it was large, was, uh, was what we heard there. And it was very large. They were wondering how that was going to work. They probably didn't bring a hammer drill or chisel or... They didn't bring anything except spices. That's right. Good attention there. But they wanted to get to Jesus. But they figured, they figured he was still dead, right? They figured he was still dead. They didn't have any idea how they were going to move the tomb, this stone. You guys apparently have never really thought about this either. I always used to think about that as a kid. And they just realize it when they get to there. We're going to be talking today about rock, about stone. Because stone is very heavy, right? Stone is, most of the time, it's, it's pretty solid. You need things like a hammer or, or chisel or something to break through it. You can't just break stone with your bare hand, can you? No, I don't suggest you try. Unless you're playing video games, sure, maybe. A chainsaw, maybe if you had the right blade. But we're going to be thinking about rocks and how they are a sign of like strength and how rocks are unchanging. So that's really what the disciples and everybody that went to the tomb was thinking, that nothing was going to change. But that's the joy, that's the, the happiness of Easter is that a lot had changed in just a few days' time. That Jesus was no longer dead. And why do you think that matters for you? He's Have you ever thought about that? Because he's Lord and Savior. Because he's still alive. That Jesus died and rose to life. He's still alive. He doesn't die again. Any other thoughts why that matters to you? Hopefully you've thought about that too, because it does matter. Because it... Yeah, he takes away our sins on the cross and he opens up a way that we would have life because that, that really is the promise what we look ahead to in the midst of all of our lives. That life may be pretty good most days and some days not so good, but we have hope because Jesus is alive. There's something bigger that we look forward to now, but also forever because Jesus is alive. So it's good that God can change unchangeable things like, like death. And God is working change in your life as well. Why don't we pray, you guys? You can repeat after me. Lord Jesus, thank you that you are alive. Fill my heart with joy. 
love and hope in you. Amen. Amen. Thanks, you guys. I don't have treats. You guys already have treats, probably. If, you're, if you look close, I've been telling you, if you look close enough around here, there's still probably some from yesterday's egg hunt that you could find, but uh, you could do that at your seats. Uh, <laughs> but excellent. Thanks, you guys. And be thinking about the unchanging, how God is unchanging, but how he changes, how he changes, transforms our expectations. Some of you are on the hunt. I see Emmett looking, scouring for eggs there. Excellent. <laughs> Do we have, there we go. We have our voice. Okay, today is Sunday, March 31st, Easter Sunday. Our first reading is from Isaiah 25, verses 6 to 9. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all people a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wine, of rich food full of marrow, of aged wine well-refined. And he will swallow up on this mountain the covering, covering that is cast over all peoples, the veil that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever, and the Lord God will wipe away tears from all faces, and the reproach of his people will take away, will, he will take away from all the earth, for the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Behold, This is our God. We have waited for him, and he might save us. This is the Lord. We have waited for him. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. The second reading comes from 1 Corinthians 15, verses 1 to 11. Now I would remind you, brothers, of the gospel I preach to you which you receive and in which you stand, and by which you are being saved. If you hold fast to the world I preach to you, unless you believe unless you believed is vain, in vain. For I deliver to you as of first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the Scriptures that he was buried and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Caiaphas, Cephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James and then to all the apostles. Last of all, As to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unworthy to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace towards me was not in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God, that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we preach and so you believed. Please join me in our memory verse for this month. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Psalm 23, 4. And if you'd like to join me in the Nicene Creed and our belief in our faith, we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, being not made of of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. 
He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in one, the Holy Spirit, the Lord and the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let's stand together and sing. invite you to be seated. And would you quiet yourselves for a word of prayer as we come to think more on, on the story of Easter this morning. We pray, Lord Jesus, that, that truly your, your very spirit, the spirit of, of our living God, would fall fresh upon us here today, that we would know your presence, your love, your grace, and have hope and joy in you, in the midst of our lives and all that, that we are. To you be all glory, honor, and praise and majesty alone. Amen. 
I'll let everyone cycle through first, don't worry. <laughs> so as you guessed, we're talking about Easter, and I already gave away, uh, uh, we're, we're talking specifically about a rock today. We've been talking about, you guys seem so far away, everyone's back backloaded here again. Uh, we've been talking, uh, as, as you well know, throughout all of Lent about the various ways that God has chosen to reveal himself to us in everyday ordinary ways, uh, through, through the cross and, and wood and bread and wine and salt and fire and water and, and all of those, those sorts of things. Today we think about the way that God reveals himself to us in, in a rock, in the rock Particularly, you, you know where that's going with the tomb, the stone tomb in which Jesus was laid. Many of you will, will remember this. Uh, maybe you won't, because there it is. Many of you will remember this uh, from the early 90s. Some of you aren't quite of that vintage, apparently. Somehow the early 90s are 30 <laughs> years ago already, but... Uh, <laughs> You see that advertisement, and does anybody want to sing it for us? Because <laughs> you see that advert there, somebody was bold enough to sing back there, right? You see that advertisement, and immediately you have Bob Seger's song, Like a Rock, going through your head. It's just embedded in there, brilliant piece of advertising that 30 years later, if you were around at that point, you still have that just embedded. And probably if you ever hear that song on the radio, if you were in the 90s, you listen to the radio still, I think, right? Uh, yeah. You think of Chevy trucks, right? Yeah, that's just what, what's connected there. Uh, I don't think we have this uh, insurance company in Canada. They don't operate Prudential. It's a major insurance company in the U.S. You, you Canadians will know it from where the New Jersey Devils play and prove Prudential uh, Center and no, not even that. Okay, we'll just skip right over this. <laughs> both of these, what what do they both have in common? The rock. Thank you, kids. You're you're on top of it. it, it it's very obvious, right? And. These are not the only examples of companies in particular that use rocks as advertising. All because, what does a rock convey? We kind of talked about it already. But you think of a rock, you think of strength, you think of certainty, solid like a rock, dependable, not going anywhere, it's unchanging, unmoving, it is firm and steady. That's why we have things like uh, Jesus even uh, uh, telling his disciples where to build their house, not a physical house, although that's very good advice. His spiritual house, don't build your rock on a sandy land. Don't build it too near the shore. <laughs> Somebody else is going to sing now. We have Bob Seger and now kids, uh, Christian, <laughs> right? But build on a rock. Right? Build on a rock. The rock who is, is Jesus, of course. Rock conveys strength, stability, unwavering, the sense that it will be there. It will be there. And so it's, it's no surprise that Jesus was laid in a stone tomb. Perhaps other than that's just what they had available. That was the burial practice and custom of the, the time and the day. But I think as, as, as we look into the story a little bit, there, there's also significance to being buried in a stone tomb. And even if you were to take a drive out to the, the cemetery today, you would see headstones that are made of stone, right? That are there to be there forever is the, the intention. That they're unchanging. We heard how he was laid in the stone tomb on Friday, in fact. That's how the story ended on Friday. We had Mary going, and, and it recorded in Mark's gospel that she saw them put him in the stone tomb. And a large stone was rolled in front of it. It conveys the message that this is it. This is it. Nobody's coming in and nobody's going out. What we've put in this tomb is here to stay. 
it's sealed up, it's over and done with. Nothing is changing. And certainly, like the kids pointed out, that's what the women were expecting as they came to the tomb, right? They came not with balloons or, you know, whatever, celebrating. They came with the spices to anoint his body, fully expecting to try to have to get the stone rolled away somehow from the tomb and everything else. They expected Jesus to be unchanged there, lying dead where they put him on Friday. And everything pointed to that's how it should be. Because in their life, in their existence, as in our life, in our existence, dead people and dead things stay dead. Jesus tried to warn them, though, that, this, that he was not like everyone else. They still didn't quite clue into that. They still were expecting the very thing that they left on Friday. But of course, we know that's not the case, and, and that's why we're here, right? That's why we're, we're, we're here and joining together, that that's not the case, that in fact, a shocking change has taken place. The stone was gone. There's a young man sitting where Jesus was, uh, was laid, uh, glowing likely or, or, or something pronouncing that he is risen. He is risen. A shocking change came over them. And they were expecting one thing. They were expecting one thing, bolstered by the stone and the tomb and everything that they knew, the reality of existence as they knew it. But they came to that tomb and were confronted with a jarring reality. confronted with utter disbelief, not knowing how to process. That's why I, I, I love Mark's gospel, actually, because it's so honest. It's not like they were like, woohoo, Jesus is alive. We have the reality of people confronted with something they were not expecting. And when you're confronted with something you don't expect, we react all sorts of ways, don't we? I've been uh, inundated this week, uh, as, as many of your news stories and everything else probably have been. Uh, you can just do this for me, Abby, because this is not working clearly. Uh, <laughs> but, but confronted this week and, and bombarded by posts of the bridge collapse in Baltimore, uh, being from there, I have lots of friends still there. And just, just overcome by the, 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 the reaction to it and how jarring and unsettling it is for people particularly in that reason, region. How many posts are talking about look up and the skyline's never going to be the same. And I just don't know, you know, it was there one moment and gone the next. Still processing, what, three, four, five days on from this just don't know how to process and a, a profound loss and, and devastation, just feeling shook by, by this happening. There's events in our own lives that shake us. Right? We all, you probably can think of something right off the top of your head. Things that have happened in our lives that shake us to our core, that when we're confronted with them, we, we wonder, where do we go from here? What is life going to look like? How do I carry on? What's going on? What's the meaning behind all of this? Things that shake us up, unexpected news or, or loss. And like I said, I, that's what I love about Mark's gospel, is that it's not a nice, neat bow tie to the story. Like, this isn't just a, a nice fairy tale. And Jesus came back to life, and they lived happily ever after at the end. If you like nice, neat stories, that's how you would end, end the book and end the story, and everyone just goes on happy, happy, clappy, right? But Mark's gospel ends with the women trembling, with fear, astonishment, 
unsure, unknowing of what to do with the, the information that their eyes were taking in that Jesus wasn't there. And I know it's always hard for us to, to place ourselves in, in that position, having heard the story so many times. But I want to lean into that a little bit because I think really it does give validation to all the times that we are shook in our own lives. All the times that we are confronted by things that we don't know how to react to. All the times that we are confronted by realities that we just throw our hands up and say, what do we do with this? Because that happens often in life, doesn't it? you turn on the news or even just uh, in your own in your own families in your own life this gives validation to all those times that we do feel shook to our our very core and our very being we look around and wonder where do we go from here it's also thankfully though not the the ending to the story Uh, mark's gospel ends in this way But Acts and all the other Gospels have them going out, going out and telling and and telling the disciples and Jesus meeting them. And and we know that he is alive and they they come to that reality and and to that awareness. But the rock, the open tomb, profoundly conveys the transformative work of the Gospel. That rock, that that open tomb, profoundly conveys the transformative work of the gospel. That it's not always a neat and tidy event like we would like it to be. That we believe in Jesus and now my life is perfectly great and just rosy and happy and, you know, everything else. But it speaks to the reality that the resurrection is an upheaval of the natural order. It turns the world upside down, turns the expectations and the realities of the world, of our lives, upside down. The surety that's conveyed by the strength of that rock, the unchanging uh, picture of, of what we've put in here is gone and dead, has been turned upside down on Easter morning, hasn't it? It's the declaration that death is not and does not have the final say. Because death ultimately is that final thing that waits for us all, isn't it? A thing that we all can be sure about. The resurrection life we're called into isn't just neat and tidy. It's an upheaval of the way things had been done, had been lived, had been experienced. The old ways and thoughts and habits of our own lives resist change. Despite God calling for transformation, seeking transformation, working resurrection in our own lives, there's that resistance to the upheaval of the way things have always been done. Have you heard that before? (laughs) We've always done it this way. It's our old enemy still seeking disruption and chaos, still seeking to work evil as best as he can. But the rock of our old ways has burst open on this resurrection morning by the triumph of our God, who is our rock. Our God who is our rock. And this is good news for us, that God is the one who can be counted on It may not always feel that way or seem that way. But as you honestly look at your own life, and and as I do, and as you look through Scripture, and as as you talk with, with each other, how many stories do we have of God being the only dependable thing that we do have in our lives? Of being faithful, of being good. God is the one that can be counted on But we also celebrate today that 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 rock, the opening of that rock, of that tomb there, breaks the certainty with which we used to live. The certainty that evil wins. Because again, as you look around the world, as you turn on the news, as you think of your own lives, 
Sometimes it feels like evil wins, doesn't it? That bad is just let loose. Easter is a declaration that it hasn't won, and it doesn't get to win. But when that comes home to roost in our own lives, that gets to be the real unsettling part. We're good with God breaking the old ways and old habits of the world and, and evil and, and our enemy being put, put under his feet and his power. The real unsettling part is when God comes to break our hearts of stone, our unmoving, our unchanging hearts. We're okay with healing and freedom. We're okay with God uh, ruling and, and reigning in the world and evil not triumphing and, and all of that stuff. But hands off telling me how to do my life. Hands off telling me how to live. Hands off reshaping me in your likeness, Lord Jesus. But today is the reminder that Jesus breaks open the hard vaults of our heart. Even when we want to keep him at a distance, clinging to, to our idols of, of whatever it is that we seek after, that we seek as, as fulfillment, as pleasure, as good, as meaningful. Even good things like, like family and sports and, and the idea of inclusion and, and health and all those things. What is it that we're holding on to? That we are stubbornly resisting the resurrecting work of Jesus in our lives. The work of new life. It may not always look the way we expect it. It's certainly true for the women in our story today. Resurrection certainly didn't look like they expected it. God working new life in our lives, I think, rarely looks the way that we expect it to. And though in our story today, the women may not yet see it or fully understand, comprehend what God is doing, of how he's bringing resurrection and new life, again, I think that's good news for us. Because I think we fail to understand in so many ways, of what God is doing in our midst, of how he is working new life in us, wanting to bring new life to us, to give us hope beyond what we can see, hope beyond what, what we believe in, in our little lives, our little castles that we like to build up ourselves. So we cling, though we may not yet see it, though we may not yet recognize Jesus' resurrection and new life in our lives, that he has come, he is alive, to restore, to reorder, to recreate life, a life grounded on him, our rock, the one who is sure, the one who is unchanging, the one who can be trusted, so it is that we can declare that Christ is risen. <laughs> Thought I'd sneak that in there to see who's awake still. Uh, <laughs> but that is how we can declare that Christ is risen. <laughs> he is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Okay, about three quarters of you woke up at that point. That's good. Uh, <laughs> Let's turn to, to our God in prayer this morning. Would you settle and quiet your hearts before him? So, Lord God, Heavenly Father, we do thank you that you are the King of kings and Lord of lords, that in you truly we have confidence and assurance that death do, does not have the final say. That evil, though it may seem to run rampant and wild in our world, maybe even in our own lives, does not get the victory, but that you have defeated our old enemy. You have defeated sin, death, and the devil, that we would have new life in you. And so as we look to the, the rock, as we look to the empty tomb today, 
May we see the possibilities of your resurrecting work, your new creation, springing in us and springing in this world, turning things upside down, bringing an upheaval to the old way of things, the expected way of things. I pray, Lord Jesus, that you would give us eyes to see you at work, your new life, your recreating work in our lives. And may we know the wholeness of life, wholeness of peace and joy in your presence, that because you are alive, we too will have life forever. I pray, Spirit, you would give us hearts to believe that in faith, that you would lead us ever closer to you, following after you, the one who is our source of hope, life, and joy, now and forever. Amen. I'd invite you to stand with me as you're able this morning. As it is our privilege to come before our God and to receive from him once again in this meal the assurance not that he is, is just die, has died for us, has given us forgiveness of sin, but that he is alive, that he is present with us. But we do celebrate in this meal that we are his, that, that we are forgiven. and Celebrate the new work, the new life and he longs to do in us. And so the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is indeed, Lord Jesus, good and right that we give you all thanks and praise. For you are risen, you are alive, and you have promised to to be our rock and our source our comfort, and our presence now and forever. Confirm to to us in this meal your love, your presence, and, and your life now and forever. And so, holy God, mighty Lord, and gracious Father, endless is your mercy and eternal is your reign. You have filled all creation with light and life. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Through Abraham, you promised to bless all nations. You rescued Israel, your chosen people. Through the prophets, you renewed your promise. And at this, the end of all the ages, you sent your Son, who in words and deeds proclaimed your kingdom and was obedient to your will, even to giving his life. And so it was on the night in which he was betrayed that our Lord Jesus took bread, he gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink it, for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink of this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes, saying, Christ has died, Christ is risen, and Christ will come again. Therefore, gracious Father, with this bread and cup, we remember the life our Lord offers to us, and believing the witness of his resurrection, we await his coming in power to share with us the great and promised feast. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Send now, we pray, your Holy Spirit, the Spirit of our Lord and his resurrection, that we who receive the Lord's body and blood may live to the praise of your glory and receive your inheritance with all your saints in light. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit. So together, as God's people, we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I invite you to be seated. I'd ask those who are assisting to come and receive first this morning. As always, we welcome all those whose hope and trust is in our Lord Jesus to come and receive at this table. If you believe in him as, as your Lord and Savior, you're welcome here. Uh, if you require a gluten-free option, you can make that a wear to me and, and I can give you that. Uh, also, if you want an individual glass of of wine, you could pick up an empty uh, cup on the, from the usher here, or pick up a filled cup for grape juice. And it's 
still a mystery It's a miracle to me The power of God For those who believe Mighty, awesome, wonderful Is the Holy Cross Where the Lamb laid down His life To lift us from the fall Mighty is the power of Mighty is the power of Mighty is the power of the cross throne dressed in glory not my own what a joy I'll sing of on that day no more tears or broken dreams forgotten is the minor key everything as it was meant to be and we will worship you pay to bring me home not till then Lord shall I know not till then how much I owe everything I am before your throne and we will worship worship forever in your presence we
Why don't we stand together and we'll sing in Christ alone. So now may this the very body and blood of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, our, our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you, keep you in his resurrection, life, hope, and joy, now until life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. I invite you to pray with me. Eternal God, gracious Father, we give you thanks that you have remembered your covenant bringing life and salvation to us through the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Open our minds and hearts that we might remember our Lord's resurrection, rejoice in his victory over sin, death, and the power of the devil, and live as members of his kingdom in hope for the kingdom that is yet to come. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And, and now I invite you to stretch your hands out. Uh, we, we like to bless one another here as we go out, and particularly on this Easter, uh, we'll bless one another using these words from, from the book of Hebrews. And now may the God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, equip you with everything good that you may do his will, working in us that which is pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine on you 
and be gracious to you. May the Lord look on you with favor and give you his peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So we'll try it one more time. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. There we go. All right. Oh, we go in peace to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Oh, and kids, maybe we can have an adult help you. You all can have a balloon or two or something here if you want to take those home.